Stop right at that. God is good. He's still in the miracle working business. Amen? Amen, amen. So today we're going to talk about heaven. Somebody say heaven. So this is Bible study, not just Bible inspiration. So I want to give you some real study. So we're going to put a video on. I want you to watch this video. Um, it's about nine minutes, but it talks about heaven because a lot of us have these preconceived notions. And I want to make sure you're equipped and know about heaven and really know what it's all about. So let's watch this quick video, and then we're going to our study today about heaven. Hey, my friend, welcome to The Beat. My name is Alan Parr. Thank you so much for tuning in. If this is your first time here on this channel, we answer frequently asked questions about the Christian faith. We talk about dating and relationships from a Christian perspective, and we do all sorts of other Bible-based videos as well. So if you're new, consider subscribing. So unfortunately, so many people see heaven as some boring place where all we're going to do is sit around the throne and sing 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days of the year. And because of that, many people People long for their lives here on earth more than they long for heaven. Now, unfortunately, there is a whole lot in the Bible about hell, but there's not a whole lot of things about heaven. However, I do believe that there are some facts that have been sprinkled throughout the New Testament that can give us an idea or just a glimpse as to what heaven is going to be like and what we are going to be doing throughout all eternity. And in this video, I want to share seven of those with you. First up on the list, as you can imagine, is singing. Revelation chapter 5 verse 13 says, And then I heard every creature in heaven and on earth and under the earth and in the sea, they sang, Blessing and honor and glory and power belong to the one sitting on the throne and to the Lamb forever and ever. So just for a second, I want you to imagine the best worship service that you have ever been to in your life. I mean, the worship leader is leading you into the presence of God and the music is moving you to tears, right? This is how I believe the worship is going to be in heaven. Now, for some of you who get bored during the worship service or you purposely arrive to church, late only to get there for the preaching you know who you are or you don't believe you can sing very well don't worry you will not get bored in heaven I promise you plus there are six more things that I believe that we're gonna do the second thing that I believe that we are gonna do in heaven and throughout all eternity is simply to enjoy God's beautiful creation Luke chapter 23 verse 43 says this and Jesus replied I assure you today you will be with me in paradise. So the Greek word used here for the word paradise is actually the word park or God's park. So for just a second, I want you to imagine the best vacation that you have ever been on. I mean, the oceans, the seas, the views were just so beautiful and you were just simply enjoying the beauty of God's creation. This is how I believe it's going to be in heaven and on the new earth throughout all eternity times one million. The third thing that I believe that we're going to do in heaven and throughout all eternity is to learn. First Corinthians chapter 13 verse 12 says, for now we see only a reflection as in a mirror, then we shall see face to face. Now I know in part then I shall know fully. So notice it says here that we are going to sit down and see Jesus face to face. So for just a second now, I want you to imagine the best Bible study that you've ever been in. As a matter of fact, the best class that you've ever been in where the teacher just breaks things down and you're just sitting there taking notes and it's a class that you just can't wait to get to, right? Imagine being able to sit at the presence of Jesus, sit at his feet and sit across from him face to face and ask him every single question that you've ever had about anything this is what I believe that we are going to be able to experience throughout all eternity. The fourth thing that I believe that we are going to do is simply to enjoy fellowship. First of all, we're going to enjoy fellowship with Jesus Christ. John 14, 3 says, And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you also may be where I am. So once again, just to imagine that we are going to be able to fellowship and be exactly where Jesus is and to simply enjoy his presence and enjoy his company throughout all eternity is a thought that should excite anyone. But not only fellowship with Jesus throughout all eternity, but just as exciting, we will be reunited and we will be able to fellowship with believers throughout all eternity. Notice what Matthew chapter 8 verse 11 says. And I tell you this, that many Gentiles will come from all over the world, from east and west, 
and sit down with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob at the feast in the kingdom of heaven. So now for just a second, I want you to imagine the best fellowship that you have ever had in your life. I'm talking about you went out with your friends or your family members and you just laughed, you cried, you just enjoyed each other's company. I believe this is what we are going to experience throughout all eternity as we are reunited with those who have passed on before us, but also we're going to spend all eternity getting to know other Christians and people in the Bible that have died and passed on before us throughout all eternity. I believe that heaven and the new earth is going to be a place of great fellowship. The fifth thing that I believe that we are going to do is to serve God or work. Revelation 22, 3 through 5 says this, no longer will there be any curse. The throne of God and of the lamb will be in the city and his servants will serve him. Notice at the end of verse 5, it says, and they will reign forever and ever. Also in Luke chapter 19, verse 17, Jesus gives a parable concerning the kingdom of heaven. And it says here, well done, my good servant, his master replied, because you have been trustworthy in a very small matter, take charge of 10 cities. Now, to be fair to the text, I'm not sure that we can press this literally, but some scholars have believed that this suggests that in heaven, there's going to be different levels of responsibilities that we are going to have when we get there. Either way, for just a second, I want you to imagine the best job that you've ever been on, the best boss that you've ever worked for, the, the feeling that you had when you went to that job, you enjoyed that job, you felt equipped, you felt empowered and enabled to do that job. Well, my friend, God is going to give you and I something very special to do as we serve him throughout all eternity that is going to bring great fulfillment to us. Number six is one of my personal favorite and I believe that we are going to eat and to celebrate throughout all eternity. Luke chapter 22 verse 30 says so that you may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom. Also, Revelation chapter 19, verse 9 says, write this, blessed are those who are invited to the wedding supper of the Lamb. So now for just a second, I want you to imagine the best meal that you have ever eaten. I'm talking about that restaurant that you and your wife go to or you and your husband go to that you just know you're going to get some good food. Well, I believe that in heaven that we are going to enjoy the best cuisine ever created. As a matter of fact, if indeed it is true that God is going to restore those things that were destroyed at creation, if we go back to the Garden of Eden, we see that Adam and Eve were free to eat of any trees in the garden. They were able to eat uh, fruits and vegetables and what have you. So if God indeed is going to restore that environment, then how much greater could the food be in heaven and throughout all eternity? And the seventh and final thing that I believe that we're going to do throughout all eternity is to rest. Revelation chapter 14, verse 13 says, Blessed are the dead who die in the Lord from now on. Yes, says the Spirit, they will rest from their labor, for their deeds will follow them. In addition to this, there are several verses in Hebrews chapter 4 that suggest the same thing. Chapter 4, verse 9 says, There remains then a Sabbath rest for the people of God, for anyone who enters God's rest also rests from their works just as God did from his. So once again, this is not saying that we're going to rest because we're tired, but simply we're going to rest to just simply enjoy God's creation and enjoy the fruit of our labor and just simply rest from our work. So my friend, contrary to what people may believe, I don't believe we're going to be bored in heaven for one second. We are going to be so filled up and we're going to have such a great time learning and worshiping and fellowshipping with other believers, getting to know Jesus, asking questions, right? Right? Uh, eating, uh, celebrating, resting, working, and just simply enjoying God's beautiful creation. So if you are struggling on this side of heaven, just remember that this earth is not our home. We're just simply passing through and that God has something beautiful for you and I to enjoy throughout all eternity. Question of the day, what do you believe heaven is going to be like? Leave that in the comment section below. If you like this video, hit the like button. Don't forget to share. Amen. Give God some praise for heaven. All right. Looks good to me, right? Because there's some trouble on this side of the earth, right? 
Amen, amen. So he was talking about, Mr. Parr, he was talking about some things that will happen in heaven. So I thought it'd be good to talk about some things that you'll never do in heaven. Some things you'll never do in heaven. Some things to think about and give us a different perspective on things. Because I think it's always good to know what we have to look forward to. So here I'm going to start. What's not happening in heaven? We're going to go to the first one. Here's the first thing. You probably did not realize it, but likely today you've been involved in or soon will be involved in activities that will be inappropriate in heaven. And I'm not just talking about sinful things, hopefully, but, but little things that remind us we are not at home in this world. So what are some of these things? So we're going to go into it. The next thing. So we will not Here's the thing that p- most people probably didn't know. Um, observe the Lord's Supper. That was given to us to remember his death and his sacrifice, as we know in the Bible, until he comes. So that's one thing that we will not have to do in heaven is no longer will we be doing the Lord's Supper. Here's another thing. We won't have to take up a collection. There won't be tithe and offering in heaven. Uh, here's another thing. You won't even need to pray. There won't be prayer as we know it in heaven. Um, you won't even be listening to a sermon. Uh, like we normally would listen to on a Sunday morning in church. Um, about the only thing we, t- we hear in the Bible that you'll do in heaven is a lot of singing. And, and again, as Mr. Paul said, uh, Parr said, even if you're not a good singer, you'll probably turn into one in heaven. So for all of us who may not think you can sing in heaven, you're going to become a singer. Um, but uh, the Bible says there'll be new songs, not the ones that we sing here and now. There'll be some new music. So if you're tired of the music here on earth, you're going to have some good music in heaven. Can somebody say amen to that? Here's another thing that we will not have in heaven. We will not have to go to the medicine cabinet. Isn't it good to know the Bible speaks and teaches us that there will be no more sickness No more sickness in heaven. We won't have to deal with headaches like we deal with here on earth. We won't have to deal with that arthritis in the morning. We won't have to deal with disease or or, or those other pains that ail us and having to deal with doctors. We won't have to do that in heaven. And here's a good one. There is no CVS in heaven. No drugstores, no need for the pharmacy. Can I get a witness for that one? I don't know, some of you must may be tired. Even if you're watching this online, I know you're tired of going to that pharmacy, especially when the line is long. So you won't have to do that in heaven. No more uh, toothbrushes. I'm being silly right there, but no more toothbrushes. No more having to probably brush your teeth and everything else. You have clean breath all the time. Uh, John wrote, neither shall there be any more pain. That's the great thing about heaven. There shall be no more pain found in Revelation 21 verse 4. And sometimes we need to think about this when we think about the struggles on this side of life. Uh, we need to think about there's a better side that's on the other side. And, and we may not be in a rush to get there, but the good thing to know is when we do, everything's going to be all right. And it's going to be an awesome time in heaven. Here's another thing, and we just had one earlier today. We will not attend any more funerals. I don't know about you, but I get tired of funerals. Um, I do many funerals, just about all of them, and they really kind of get to me here, you know, on Sunday. You know, it's a lot of them. You're sad. You see people sad. You see people crying. You see people dealing with loss. And so there'll be no more funerals. There are no hillsides dotted with the markers of loved ones across jo- the Jordan. There'll be no more cemeteries. It'd be good to know that you won't be driving past and see all these cemeteries like we do here today. You won't find cemeteries silent cities of the dead in heaven for no one ever dies there there won't be flowers or words spoken about somebody that's gone John wrote there shall be no more death there shall be no more death that's again found in Revelations 21 verse 4 here's some other things there will not be there will not be a reason to turn on a light switch There will not be a reason to turn on the light switch. The Bible says that there is no darkness in heaven for the glory of God did lighten it. And the Lamb is the light thereof. God is going to light up, light up heaven. There shall be no night there found in Revelation. So there will be no street lamps, no night lights, no light switches, no incandescent fluorescent or neon lights, no light from the TV screen. There'll be no need for light because it will already be bright there. The sun and the moving stars have been destroyed. There's going to be light where? It's going to be everywhere. 
no more darkness. Somebody say, no more darkness. No more darkness in heaven. Here's another thing that we will not have to face in heaven, and I love this. We will not have to face temptation. Truth of the matter is we face temptation every single day because the devil is busy. How many know the devil is busy? He's busy in our situation. He's busy in our life. He's trying to always pull us away from God and God's best for our life. And so in heaven, you don't have to deal with temptation. That's found in 1 Peter 5 verse 8. The Bible says this in Ephesians 6, 13 through 18. It says, oh, how we wish we could lay our armor aside and just rest from the constant battle of faith. Here on this earth, we're always uh, being uh, put in these situations where we call the testing of our faith and the testing of our resolve, the testing of us being able to stick to God and stick to what he would have for us to do. We won't have to deal with that on the other side. So the Bible says that the day is coming in the land where we are staking our claim. And the devil, the good news is he has no passport to where we're going. He won't be able to bother us. He won't be able to tempt us and put us in bad situations. That's the one place where evil is not invited. The Bible says this, in fact, we have been cast down into the lake of fire. Uh, he will be cast down into the lake of fire and brimstone. That's where the devil goes. His helpers, too, uh, will be cast into the lake in, Reve in Revelations 19.20. So we don't have to worry about temptation, and we don't have to worry about the enemy when we get to heaven. Here's another thing that I'm happy we will not have to do. We won't have to visit a sick person. Anybody ever visit a sick person recently or somebody that's been sick and somebody that's been tough? That's one of the toughest things to do. You know, I do hospital visits from time to time, and one of the roughest things to do is visit a hospital because I may be there to visit one person, but, you know, when you go to a hospital, you just see rows of folk going through things. And I, I try to just put my hand out and pray for everybody there, but, you know, you feel bad when you're around somebody who's sick. You, you want to, you know, really, uh, uh, you know, feel their pain sometimes and, and wonder what they're going through. So the good thing about heaven is we won't have to experience sick people. We we try to get to see the sick people at hospitals or homes, but we'll never have to do that in heaven. And so all the ill effects of a sinful world, including sickness, will be reversed in heaven. The good thing is, if you're a doctor, if you're a nurse, you won't have to be practicing that in heaven. You won't have to be involved in that. There'll be no more doctors and no more nurses. We won't have to listen to people complain about their aches and pains. How many know some complainers in your life? I got some aches and I got some pains. You won't have to hear that in heaven. John said, the former things are passed away. The former things are passed away. We won't have to deal with that. Here's another thing we won't have to deal with, and I'm just kind of going down the list of some good news. We will not have to lock our doors. Isn't it good to know? Anybody ever say, oh, I forgot to lock the door. You won't have to lock the doors. We live in a wicked society. Every night the news tells us and gives us a reason to lock our doors. Every night the news tells us about robberies and rapes and people being killed and all these terrible things. And so we lock our doors to give us some type of security. And the great thing about heaven, it's one of the most secure places in the world. We rush to fasten our windows and, and secure our homes. But in heaven, you don't have to secure your mansion. Everything is okay. There's no bad news in heaven. Isn't it good to know that there's no bad news in heaven? The doors on the mansions don't have no dead boats. The windows have no locks. And the homes don't have to have burglar alarms. There's no ADT in heaven. That's a good thing. Um, the Bible says this in Revelations 21, 27. And I'm reading the voice version and it's up on the screen. It says, nothing that defiles or is defiled can enter into the glorious gates. Those who practice sacrilege or deception will never walk its streets. Only those whose names are written in the Lamb's book of life can enter. So there's no evil folk. There's no bad people in heaven. The wedding feast is by invitation only, and there's no wedding crashers. 
Nobody there to crash the party in heaven. I know, hallelujah. Nobody there to crash the party. You know, every once in a while, there's some wedding crashes. There's some people that want to crash the party. I don't know about you, but I've heard of some friends. They had some parties in the backyard, and all of a sudden, they walk around, and they see some folk in there that wasn't invited. And they look, and how'd you get in here? And the person said, I crashed your party. And there's no party crashers in heaven. Here's another thing, and this is good news. Don't get mad at me if you consider yourself old. There will be no old people. No old people. Somebody said, what you talking about? She said, what you talking about? Sister Harris, that means you, when, when we all get to heaven, you're going to look younger. You're going to be a younger person. I'm going to get to see how you used to look many years ago. You still look the same, but you know what I'm talking about. There won't be no old people. We daily see the aging process in our cells. Let me give it to you. We see the aging process in our cells and our loved ones. We watch our children. You know how we say they grow so fast. Uh, skin wrinkles, vision dims. Not on Minister Schamberger though. She's doing good. She's got the hearing back and she's all good. So even if you're hearing gone, she already got it. She's she already closer to heaven. She's right there. She's got that hearing. Uh, if your strength fails or your hearing goes, energy wanes, at the end of the day, we won't see that in heaven. There's a reversal. Uh, in that land, there's no retirement homes, no nursing facilities, because there are no old people. Now, we all may be considered old when we get there, but no one will show it, because the Bible says that we will receive new incorruptible bodies, found in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, 1 through 6. So basically what we get is we get a spiritual body. We get a renewed, incorruptible body. So all the little things that bother us when we wake up or when we're walking around, we don't have to deal with that always. Isn't it good to know that your ailments won't last forever? There'll be no nurseries or daycare for children. The only children will be the children of God. And somebody says, at least there won't be no babies crying all the time be a little different. I, 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 don't know, I don't know exactly how it is, but when we read the Word of God, it's not going to be the same. It's not going to be as annoying, if you will, sometimes. So at the end of the day, uh, there, will be, uh, there will only be the children of God. Here's another one. We will not, and this is great, shed any tears. We will not shed any tears. And we can all be honest, all of us at some point in our life have had to cry sometimes. Maybe it was over a loss. Maybe it was something that happened to you. Maybe it was something that you had. Maybe you had a bad week or a bad day. Um, hardly a week goes by where there's not some sadness mixed with our blessing, where there's not some sadness in our heart and our spirit. Uh, we face heartaches and sometimes we face heartbreaks far more frequently than we would want to, far more frequently than our choice. But the Bible says this in Revelations 21, 4, and God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. And there shall be no more death, there shall be no more sorrow, there shall be no more crying. Isn't it good to know there should be no more crying? I don't know about you, but I can't stand to have to cry. Sometimes it comes to you uncontrollably, but in heaven, you don't need to cry. Now, some people might say, I'll cry tears of joy, but that's a big difference than tears of sorrow and tears of pain. So that's good that we won't have to experience any of that. So here's our conclusion. The human experience is not very pleasant a lot of times. Yet there are moments that we can experience joy, happiness, and peace. But we must realize and know that everything in this life is physical. What we're going through right now is the physical. Somebody say physical. But heaven is spiritual. So the good thing about heaven is we will be into another realm. So we need to prepare and enjoy the fact that heaven is a place where when it's our time to go, we are going to have a good old time. We're going to celebrate. I don't know if I got any partiers in the house, but ain't no party like a Holy Ghost party because a Holy Ghost party don't stop. Amen? Amen. Give God some praise for heaven right now. Amen, amen. Why don't you stand on your feet before we...